Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney pays special attention to crimes committed by juveniles, no matter how petty, because the incorrigible minority of the teenagers of today will include the major criminals of tomorrow. There are even a few who don't wait until tomorrow. This case started with a gang fight at night in a public park. Give it to him. Get those three headed for the park. Go. He asked for it. High school pictures. I told him this park was closed except for my gang. You're a nice boy from the high school. Look at him run. Isn't the fight? You've got all the sticks and bottles. Get that one, Eddie. Kick his teeth out. Police are coming. All right, guys, get lost. Meet at the clubhouse later. Come on. I hope they get caught. I hope the cops catch him and put him in jail. Shut up. Through the bushes and up the hilltop. I don't have to run. I didn't do anything. You're my girl, and if I run, you run. I don't want to be your girl anymore. No, you want to go back to nice little Walter and his nice little picnic. You'll be my girl as long as I want you to. Cut up the old path behind the zoo. Go on before leave I... Leave her alone. Who's that? Never mind, just leave her alone. Walter. Well, if it ain't Brainy himself, the president of the G.O. I was wondering where you run to, Yellow Belly. I ran to call the police, that's where I ran. Your gang with baseball bats and broken bottles. Oh, that ain't fair, is it? Maybe next time we'll bring a platform and have a debate instead. Come on, Julie, I'll take you home. <laughs> on the trolley car? Get wise, she likes automobiles, don't you, honey? I'm going with Walter. Oh, no, you're not. You haven't got your gang with you now, Jackie. Well, isn't the little man getting brave? I don't need the gang for you, Brainy. Now, well, I got this. Walter, it's a knife. Jackie, don't... Look don't... at him, Julie. Look at the big, brave basketball player. Look out, Walter. It's sharp. You might get cut. <laughs> What's the matter, yellow belly? <laughs> Afraid? Cat got your tongue? Come on, take it away from me. Because if you don't... You know what's going to happen, don't you, Brainy? You dirty... Father! Stay away! No! No! You killed him! You killed him! Shut up! Shut up and get to the car. Run! You're sure the park has been thoroughly searched, huh? Chief, I've even gone over it myself. I've worked with ten different squads in the past five days. There's no sign of the murder weapon. Nothing. Mm, it beats me. None of the high school kids saw it happen. The main fight was down near the park pond. Now, whoever killed Walter Spicer got him off someplace alone up behind the zoo. This will probably be Spicer's parents calling again. Not that I blame them. Almost a week and that boy's killer is still at large. Yep. Yes, Miss Miller. Is Mr. Haken here to see you, Mr. Garrett? What about? He doesn't want to tell anyone but you. Oh, you tell him I'm busy. Ask Burton to see him. He says it's very important, Mr. Garrett. All right. Send him in. Well, I guess I've got to get down. No, no. Stay, stay. If he's a crank, you may be able to help me get him out. Right in here, Mr. Haken. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garrett? He's Mr. Garrett. Oh. My name's Jim Hagen, Mr. Garrett. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Hagen? It's all right. Mr. Harrington is a member of my staff. 
Well, it's about my daughter, Julie. I'm afraid she's in some kind of trouble. With the law? I'm not sure. I reckon it must be. Ever since we come here to the city, she's been changing. Staying out late, keeping things to herself. How old is she? Just 16. Can't you and your wife exert any authority over her? Oh, my wife said that Julie needed freedom, that it wouldn't hurt her none. She used to bring her friends to the house, and then she stopped. Ruby, uh, that's my wife, said it was because Julie was ashamed of me. Ruby says one look at me and everybody know I used to be a farmer. Mr. Hagen, this seems to be a family problem. I'd like to help you, but, well, what is it you want me to do? Oh, I thought maybe you might come to the house, talk to Julie. Might scare a little, you being a district attorney. Uh, Mr. Hagen, do you know that your daughter is in trouble, or do you just think so? She's hardly taken a bite of food all week. I've been hearing her crying in her room every night. Then last night... Go ahead. Julie was out late. I was setting up waiting for her to come home. Must have been about uh, one o'clock, I guess, when she come to the front door with a boy. I heard him talking. She's crying. She's twisting her arm or something, hurting her. Telling her to get hold of her nerves and keep her mouth shut. About what? Oh, I don't know. Well, if the boy struck your daughter, you could prefer charges, but she'd have to sign the complaint. Do you know the boy's name? Well, she called him Jackie, that's all. Could you identify him? It was too dark in the hall for me to see him. Julie never brought her friends in. I'd know his voice, though. And you have no idea what it is that he might have been telling her to keep quiet about? No. Well, you just said no sounded like yes. You said this crying had been going on for about a week. When did it start, exactly? I... Uh, no, well, maybe you're right. Maybe I'd better handle this myself. Hagen, does your daughter go to Central High School? Yes. Did your daughter know a boy named Walter Spicer? She went out with a boy named Walter before she took up with this Jackie I told you about. She used to go out with Walter Spicer? Yeah. That's why I came here. That's the night she started crying, the night Walter was killed. But she's a girl. She couldn't have had anything to do with it. But she might know who did. It's after three o'clock. School is out. Will your daughter be home? Sometimes she comes, sometimes she don't. She'll be home to eat, though, at six o'clock. All right, Mr. Hagen. You can go. We'll be at your home tonight at six o'clock. Ten o'clock? Where can she be? She's run away from home. That's where she can be. I knew she would. I warned him to quit nagging the girl, Mr. Gatt. She's old enough to take care of herself, and well, now she's gone because he brought you here. Your daughter didn't know I was going to be here, Mrs. Hagen. And a 16-year-old girl isn't as self-sufficient as you think. That may be Miss Miller, Chief. Well, may I take it? Go ahead. Hello. Mr. Garrett? Oh, yes, Miss Miller. We finally located Julie Hagen's teacher. The girl wasn't at school at all today. I see. You want me to stay here at the office in case there's anything else? For a while, please. Harrington will give you a lift home later. You could give me a ride to Central Avenue. I could take the bus from there. Well, Harrington goes close to your place, doesn't he? Y- yes, I suppose he does. Uh, it'll be fine. Good. We'll see you later. Your daughter never showed up at school today, Mr. Hagen. Where can she be? I told you where. She run away. Did you see her during the day, Mrs. Hagen? Ruby? No, Ruby didn't see her. Ruby was at the beauty parlor all day. She wouldn't know if Julie did come home. I was only at the beauty parlor for two hours. Just two hours. We're not living on a farm anymore. I've been a good mother. It wasn't me who drove her away. Better put out a missing persons report on Harrington. Right, Chief. Do you have a recent photograph of your daughter? In the bedroom. Oh, would you get it, please? We can have telephotos sent to nearby states along with her description. Oh, we'll do oh, anything. Oh, to oh, oh, he never understood her. Any more than he ever understood me. I'm sure he didn't, Mrs. Hagen. He just wanted to sit around the house every night. I don't know how I lasted all these years, except for Julie. I was the one who took care of her. 
I was the one who saw to it that we got away from that dirty old farm so she'd have a chance in life. I wanted her to have all the things that I missed. It was all for her. Oh, I'm sure of that, Mrs. Hagen. Uh, Pete will put it on the teletrap right away, Chief. Wants the photo as soon as we can get it to him. Well, I got it right here. Well, we'll take it in. Well, there's not much more we can do tonight. If Julie should come home, or if you hear from her, let me know no matter what time it is. We will, Mr. Garrett. Find her for us, please. Please find her. We'll do all we can. I hope you're satisfied, Jim. I hope you're satisfied now. Oh, Ruby, leave me alone, please. You'd better try to get some rest, Mr. Hagen. I'm sure Mrs. Hagen will take care of herself. Come on, Harrington. Well, why don't you say it? He was better off back on the farm. Make some excuses. Oh, that poor guy. She's got him in a bad way. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the daughter. Let's get this photo in as fast as we can. There's no need for you to drive me all the way home, Harrington. You can drop me off at the subway station. This time of night? Chief would eat me alive. It's out of your way. Oh, forget it. Oh, please. The station's just ahead on the corner. Hey, it's just ahead, all right. Look. An ambulance. Yeah. Quite a crowd this time of night. Something must have happened down there. I wonder what it is. It won't take long to find out. A police car there, too. Come on. Hey, get back there. We can't go down. The district attorney's office, officer. Well, let's see your credentials. Yeah, hey, uh, what is it? Girl got killed under the train just to pull into the station. Oh, she fall or jump? Motorman on the train said she was pushed. Pushed? Well, that's what he says. Said he could see her and the boy on the platform as he came out of the tunnel. And the boy shoved her. Well, he was gone by the time the train stopped. All right, take me down there. The lady better wait up here. Yeah, I guess he's right, Miss Miller. You better go on back and sit in the car. All right. Down this way. The train was eastbound. It happened right at the beginning of the platform. Oh, wasn't taking any chances on the motorman getting time to slow down and stop. All right. Put it back. No identification on her. I know who she is. wonder why she was pushed. She knew too much about that boy who was murdered in the park last night. Well, she isn't going to be able to tell anybody about it now. No, no, she isn't. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the knifing in the park, here is an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A high school boy had been stabbed to death in the park after a gang fight. A worried father led us to believe that his daughter might know something of the murder. But the girl died violently under the wheels of a subway train before we could find her and question her. Harrington called me to the subway station. I had no choice but to send for the girl's father. My little girl murdered. Murdered in a city. The city where people hate and kill each other, not like the farm. People live in peace on a farm. Take it easy, Mr. Hagen. How about let me drive you home? Home? Without Julie? Not anymore. There'd be just Ruby and me. Ruby got tired of me a long time ago. Only the girl held us together. She's all I had. Now I got nothing left. Nothing except her picture. Can I get it back? Yes. He had some blown-up copies made. You can get the original at my office at any time. Uh, why don't you give him that copy of the blow-up you got in the envelope, Chief? Oh, yes. Here, Mr. Hagen, I brought it down for identification purposes. I only had this taken three weeks ago at the amusement park. First picture of her in years. Almost like I knew something was going to happen. Three weeks ago? Yeah. Why, Chief? 
blouse the girl was wearing tonight looks like the same one she was wearing in the photograph. It is the same one. Mr. Hagen, in the blow-up you have, your daughter's wearing a little pin on her blouse, just over the pocket. Oh, yeah. She's been wearing it all the time for a few months. It isn't on the blouse now. No, she stopped wearing it a couple of days ago. I got it. With you? Yeah. May I see the pin? Thank you. What is it, Chief? High school club? No, boys club. See the crest and inscription? Oh, yeah. State Street Target. Got a clubhouse on the foot of State Street near the river. Rented an old store, painted the windows black with a tiger head on them. It was some sort of an organized gang that started that fight in the park. Those State Street kids are tough, Chief. What I want to know is, does one of the members go by the name of Jackie? Yeah. He might have given her the pin. He also might have pushed her off this platform if she saw him kill Walter Spicer. Where is that club? I'll find out if he's there. I want to get my hands on him. The law can handle this, Mr. Hagen. Officer... Yes, Mr. Garrett. You got a prowl car? Yes, sir. Drive this man home. Then go to the county building. My secretary should be back there by now. Yes, sir. Tell her to call Judge Macklin and get a search warrant for the clubhouse of the State Street Tigers. Right. After you get it, pick up a squad and meet Harrington and me at the clubhouse. Yes, sir. Come along, Mr. Hagen. Oh, my girl. Hi, Julie. Well, take my car. It's at the far exit. What's the idea of the clubhouse search, Chief? Well, even if there is a boy named Jackie who belongs to the club, we've got nothing but hearsay evidence against him. Circumstantial. We could never convict. His fellow members will probably swear he never knew Julie Hagen. That pin could prove he did. No, any member might have given it to her. She might have found it on the street. We've got to prove she knew the Tigers. Find some evidence that she'd been at the club room at one time or another. For a dance, perhaps. Hey, some of those clubs keep a guest book, Chief. Oh, that's a possibility. If there is such a book, we've got to find it. Club room is on the next corner. Better stop and leave the car here. What time is it? Uh, 1.30. Probably won't be anyone around to disturb us. Yeah. Boy, Judge Macklin will have a fit when Miss Miller gets him out of bed at this hour to sign a warrant. She can handle him. Judge is all right. It's a good thing I gave Miller the ride home. You'd have taken him a different way, and not that she'd have minded. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Chief, sometimes you surprise me. What? Oh, here's the place. State Street Tigers. No lights inside. Well, you wouldn't see them anyhow, with the windows painted over like that. Oh, I was looking under the door jamb. Locked. Spring locked. I could probably pick it with a nail file. Go ahead. The warrant's coming. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit out of practice. <laughs> you mean you used to do things like this? Well, <laughs> when I was a kid. Well, my mother was forever forgetting her keys. We were locked out of the house more times than we were in it before I learned this little stuff. There you are. From now on, I want an alibi from you attached to every burglar report we get. <laughs> come on, come on. You better close it again. Yeah. I'll leave the lock off. You, uh, you got any matches? Yeah. I should have brought a flashlight. There's a floor lamp over there. Yeah, that does it. Well, quite a layout. Furniture, pool table, cue racks, even a telephone on the wall. Yes. Come here. Take a look at this. Hmm? What? On the wall here, by the phone... Names, phone numbers, scribbled in pencil. Yeah. Tigers seem to have a lot of girlfriends. Rusty Denton, Paul Frenchy. Elmwood 41111. Eddie, Marsha called. Fleming, 6589. Mm, no name on this one. Elliot Doe, 261. Bread, lettuce, tomatoes. <laughs> Some kid wrote down the grocery list. You know, the things he's here, kiddled... Here, here. Take a look at this one, Harrington. Jackie Wilkes. Phone Evergreen 62050. Jackie? Yes. And Evergreen 62050 is Hagen's phone number. Hmm. Give us the kid's last name, too. Oh, what a break. I want a photo of this. We can check the handwriting on every boy in the club and find out who wrote it. He'll have to testify that Jackie Wilkes knew Julie Hagen. Hey, Chief... There's a car just stopped outside. 
Too soon for the squad. Kill the light. What? Anybody in here? Dope's leaving the door unlocked. Hey. Just stand right there, son. Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're looking for Jackie Wilkes. Jackie Wilkes? Never heard of him. Well, that's strange. Because his name is written on your clubhouse wall right next to the telephone. Oh, oh, that stuff. That was here before we rented this joint. We've been meaning to paint it over. Oh, is that so? How long has the club been here? A little over a year. You cops or something? Those numbers have been there over a year? Yeah, that's right. That's funny. Because one of those numbers belongs to a girl who has only lived in this city a few months. A girl named Julie Hagen. She was killed tonight, pushed off a subway platform under a train. That's too bad. Mortimer on the train saw it happen. He got a fast look at the boy's face. Maybe just good enough to identify him if he sees him in a police lineup. You just parked a car outside, didn't you? Yeah. How old are you? 18. I got a license. Good, because I want to see it. Sure, you can... What do I have to show it to you for? I didn't do anything. You know why you want it, boy. We want to get a look at your name. Oh. Okay, sure. Take a look at this instead. Put that gun away, kid. You killed a girl tonight. Don't make it any worse. Why would I kill Julie? She was my girl. Because you also killed Wallace Spicer, and Julie saw you do it. And when you thought you couldn't keep her quiet any longer with your threats, you pushed her under a train. It was an accident. She tripped. Did she? What were you doing in a subway when you own a car? Yeah, Jackie, you hear it? Those are police cars. You better give yourself up, boy. Stay back. Gun or no gun, Junior, here I come. No, Harrington. Oh, oh, oh. Harrington. Stay away from him. Do what, he's, do what he says, Chief. You tell him, Brainy. I'll take your gun, too. All right, mister. Now you douse that light and stay right in front of me. You're going to lead me out of here with one of these guns right in the middle of your back. Uh, uh, do it, Chief. He's, he's killed crazy. You can kill me, Jackie, but you can't kill the law. I won't call them off. One of them will get you. We'll see. Move. Hey, you cops out there. Who's that? Jackie Wilkes. And I got one of your big shots with a gun in his back. So listen. Is that you, Mr. Garrett? Yes. Don't let him bluff you. Take him. You try it and the DA is dead. Do what I tell you. Back off across the street. Let me and him get to my car and don't follow us. And if you're thinking of shooting, remember, to hit me, you gotta shoot through him. Never mind me. Take him. Mr. Garrett, we can't. He'll be picked up someplace. He's a killer. He'll hurt somebody else even if I get away. He shot Harrington. He's in here, wounded. Wounded, but still alive. What? I can see you against those lights, Jackie. But you can't see me. I'm behind you. I don't have to shoot through anybody but you. Uh, I've got your gun. You should have looked for another one. No! Get down, Mr. Garrett. I'll kill all of you! All right, stop. You all right, Mr. Garrett? Yes. Harrington. Here, Chief. Grab him, sir. Radio for an ambulance, Don. Oh, it's, it's not much. Flesh wound on the side. How about the kid? He's dead. How old was he, sir? Eighteen. We had to do what we did, but... A kid? His age stopped mattering when he pulled the trigger. Kid or no kid. He'd have killed you, me, all of us. Yes, sir, I know. You did what you had to do. Thanks, Mr. Garrett. Harrington, when you distracted him with that shot from behind, he had your gun. Why did you start carrying a spare? <laughs> Ooh, I, uh, I didn't, Chief. Oh, but you fired a shot. Nope. Well, what was it, then? The electric bulb from the floor lamp. I unscrewed it and threw it on the floor. Oh, that was clever, Harrington. You heard what he called me, didn't you, Chief? Brainy. <laughs> You just sit still until that ambulance gets here. You'll be all right. I think it's coming now, Mr. Garrett. Yes, it is. (laughs) 
This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Death with a gun in his hand was the way Jackie Wilkes chose to avoid trial. The police closed the club room of the State Street Tigers and six of its members who were identified as having taken part in the gang raid on the high school picnic group were given prison sentences ranging up to two years. But life had ended for Julie Hagen, too. Her parents had taken an interest in her friends. Too late. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord.